Scooter, I say hello. Mr. Eaton, this is. That's my best uh, Yoda impression, guys. This is 2.1. We're in a brand new chapter. It's forces and free body diagrams. So let's get to it. Um, guys, there's tons of forces. The better you are in this chapter, the easier all of physics is going to be. And they all come down to the one equation, which is Newton's second law of motion, which is the sum of all forces is equal to ma. That crazy looking E thing, that's called the sum of, which means if we add up all our forces, it is always equal to mass times its acceleration. One force that we have on every single object, the force of gravity, right? It doesn't matter where the object is. If it's sitting on a table, if it's up in the air, it's got the force of gravity, and that's going down to the center of the Earth, and that's mass times gravity. Again, it's a mass times acceleration, isn't it? And guys, all of our forces are in units of Newtons, okay? A big N. You don't have to write kilograms times meters per second squared, because that's mass times acceleration. We just write Newtons. We have another force, which is called the normal force. The normal force is always perpendicular to a surface, but guys, it's got to be on a surface. So if an object is up in the air, it ain't got a normal force, okay? We have another force, which is called the force of friction, of course, okay? Uh, some surfaces have friction, and that's equal to a coefficient of friction, which is just a ratio, times the normal force. Ice would have a very, very low coefficient, almost close to zero. Sandpaper would have a coefficient close to like one. So it's going to be somewhere in there. It's going to be a fraction of, of one. Uh, there's different coefficients. There's a static coefficient, and there's a kinetic coefficient. So we have different types of friction. Static friction is when you're not moving, when you're barely going to push something. you got to overcome static friction. Now, once you get an object moving you have to overcome what's called kinetic friction, of course. That is moving friction, okay? And uh, that should actually say moving frictional coefficient, okay? Um, and then we also have force of tension, which is like in strings. We have um, the force of pushing or pulling, which is all applied forces. So let, let, let me give you an example. We have a thing called free body diagrams. Guys, every single time you do a force problem, draw a free body diagram. It will make it so much easier. Let's, I'm going to take a look at three scenarios here. Let's take a look at a box just sitting on a surface. That's going to have the force of gravity, or what we call weight, okay? It has a normal forces normal force which is perpendicular to the surface okay and it could have something like pushing or pulling okay and of course it could have friction okay it might not have the force of pushing might not have friction but guys it's always going to have this normal force and the force of gravity let's take a look at an object on an incline okay we of course have the force of gravity or what we call weight and that's going to go straight down towards the center of the earth take a look at where the normal force is the normal force is going to be perpendicular. So it's not going to be up, it, it'll be perpendicular. And then, of course, we could have something like friction that is holding this object from going down the incline. Well, here we have an object uh, that has gravity, of course, or weight going straight down. And, of course, we have a string here, so we would have a force of tension. Now, guys, if you take a look, see how the force of tension is much greater than the weight? Okay, so it's going to accelerate because we have a sum of all our forces, which is the tension, which is going up, we call that positive, minus the weight, which is going down, we call that negative, that's why it's minus, and that's equal to ma. And where is the acceleration going to be going? Upwards, because you can see how the big arrow going up is bigger than the arrow going down. Of course, that's going back to vectors. Okay. Let's do an example problem here. Uh, here, the example problem, we have a 50 kilogram object, and it's pu pushed horizontally with 70 newtons on a surface that has a coefficient of friction of 0 0.10. And we want to calculate the acceleration of the object. What's the first thing we do? Guys, we draw a free body diagram. I don't care what you're going to do, draw a fr free body diagram. And what do we have here? We have weight going down, we have normal force going up, we have the force of pushing, and we have a frictional force. Okay? And so let's, let's start taking a look at this. Now, just like with cliff problems, with things like that, we want to split this up into X's and Y's because we can't mix those things up. X's and Y's. Let's start with the Y direction. With the Y direction, we, and guys, we have the force of gravity, which is also called weight. It's equal to mass times gravity. That's 50 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. You guys could do that math in your head. It's 500 newtons. Now, guys, I didn't use 9.8. Okay, if you want to use 9.8, go right ahead. I'm using 10 here just so our numbers are nice and easy, okay? So the weight, or the force of gravity, is 500 newtons, 
okay? Which means the sum of all forces, I'm going to develop my equation, is equal to normal force, which is up, minus gravity, which is going down. And guys, it's not accelerating. It's just sitting there in the y direction. And so that's equal to zero newtons, okay? Which means the normal force and the force of gravity are equal and opposite. And you can see I worked that in the equation, which means if it's equal and opposite, the normal force is equal to 500 newtons. Now let's come over to my x direction. My x direction, I can take a look at my force of friction because my, my equation is the force of friction equals coefficient of friction times the normal force. My coefficient is 0.1. My normal force is 500 newtons. I calculated that from the y direction. And 0.1 times 500, 1 tenth of 500 is 50 newtons. So what's my frictional force? It's 50 newtons. Now if you can see, my pushing force is 70 newtons. If, if my pushing force was only 50 newtons, guess what? It's not going to accelerate. If, if my pushing force is 40 newtons, guess what? It's not going to accelerate. It's just going to sit there because I don't have a sum of my forces. But in this case, take a look. My sum of my forces in my x direction is my pushing minus my force of friction, my 70 minus my 50. So you can see 70 is bigger than 50. It's actually 20 newtons bigger. So you can see it's going to accelerate to the right, won't it? It's going to accelerate with 20 newtons of force to the right. Now when we do that equation, we can the sum of all forces are equal to ma, which means if it's 20 newtons, it's equal to 50 kilograms, that's my mass, times acceleration. And all I have to do is divide. And my acceleration is 0 0.40 meters per second squared. And of course, if I know the time, I can know that the displacement it went, I can know the velocity it goes up to, I can use all my constant acceleration equations with that acceleration. Okay? Guys, I hope this explained everything for forces and free body diagrams. We're going to be practicing this in class. So um, come to me with any questions, but make sure you do that uh, do little Google Docs quiz, and, uh, and I'll see you in class. See you guys. Bye.